Canelo Alvarez sends a chilling warning to unbeaten Edgar Berlanga ahead of their September 14th fight. I don't know how quick, but uh, I'm gonna do my my job and I'm gonna try to, to to let him, to feel him so much pain and then knock out him. Recently in an interview, Berlanga attempted to humanize Canelo despite his obvious achievements in the sport. Berlanga said, you bleed like me, you breathe the same air I breathe, you walk on the same earth that I walk on, he's nothing different, he's not a robot from outer space, he's a human, it's the mental, it's the mentality. Speaking about the process of fighting Alvarez, Berlanga confidently said, I got to go out there and just do what I do, do my thing and just turn up for the city and put my name in the history book like a legend. Berlanga also pinpointed the exact moment from their Los Angeles press conference that made him realize that Alvarez is sleeping on him as an opponent. The moment, in Berlanga's estimation, came when Berlanga and Caleb Plant, who was sitting in the audience, exchanged verbal jabs and Alvarez offered Caleb that he'll take care of Berlanga for him. But at this level is intelligence and IQ. And we're not gonna end up like that. Fuck nigga over there. I got knocked out. Caleb. All right. All right. <laughs> Hey, I, I they're both on, on the same card. Yeah, right. All right, let's turn stop, things stop, back stop, over. Stop, stop, stop. Caleb, cap, Caleb, no? take it easy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of him for you. <laughs> Canelo further commented about Berlanga's IQ remarks. He said, you don't have a better IQ than me. Alvarez then told Berlanga directly, you think you have more IQ than Floyd Mayweather, Miguel Cotto, than Eris Landy Lara? Come on, bro, you're nothing. Take it easy and wait because your turn is coming. Reacting to this drama, Berlanga told Fight Hub TV, he said that and I said, you're gonna see. But that's why I love it because this is where the doubt, I know he's sleeping on me. Just by him saying that you're sleeping on me, homie, he's sleeping on me. And that's the best part. It's cool. It's cool because I'm going to embrace all of that. He's going to respect my game that night for sure, 100%. However, Canelo was vivid in his promise for the fight. He said, I'm looking to do my best there and let him feel in so much pain, so I'm focused on that. When asked what he thinks of Berlanga as a fighter, Canelo said, He's good, he's strong, he's young, he's hungry, but it's nothing new for me. I've been in there with all the kind of fighters, difficult fighters, strong fighters, and I'm just going to go in there and do my business. He continued, I don't know how quick the fight will be finished, but I'm going to do my job and let him feel so much pain and then knock out him. I don't know what round. When asked for any parting words for his Puerto Rican opponent, Canelo said, nothing. He already know. He already know and he's going to need a really good camp so I hope he prepares himself really well because he's going to need it. Moreover, Oscar De La Hoya said that he would have easily beaten Canelo in his prime. Somebody told you to fight Canelo. Canelo? Oh, you know in my prime I would have just tapped that ass so good. Easy. Quick. Easy work. Easy work. He's flat-footed. He walks on quicksand, so anyway. Oscar also threw shades at Canelo for fighting Berlanga instead of Benavidez. He said that Canelo is running from Benavidez, that's why he's demanding unbelievable offers to fight him. Canelo running from Benavidez. What is that? I mean, imagine imagine if I ever ran from anybody. Like, did I, did I run from somebody in my career? No. Did Chavez run from somebody in, their, in his career? No. Chavez was 87 and 0, imagine that. So to me, that's the all-time greatest fighter. However, Turkey Alalshik is optimistic that he'll speak with Canelo Alvarez after his fight against Edgar Berlanga on September 14th about him fighting Terence Crawford and David Benavides. Previously, Alalshik took aim at Alvarez after the Mexican champion dismissed the idea of working together under any terms other than his own. The incident unfolded during a press conference in Beverly Hills, where Canelo Alvarez was promoting his upcoming September 14th fight against Edgar Berlanga. When questioned about a potential offer from Alalshik to fight Terence Crawford, Alvarez expressed his discontent with Alal Sheikh's approach. I don't, I don't really care about it. Look, at like I'm, I'm focused 100% on my fight and I don't, I don't really care about it. They called me yesterday. They, they text me yesterday if uh, it's possible to talk about our craft for five for February or, or meet uh, uh, to yesterday here in Los, in, Los, in Los Angeles with him. And I say, look, I'm 100% focused on this fight and I, and I can talk about other fights. Maybe that's why he talked about that to, to Day because I say I'm not ready to talk about other fights and, and, and I don't really ask him for anything I'm good
This statement marked the end of the potential megafight between Canelo Alvarez and Terence Crawford, sparking discussions across the boxing community. Alal Sheikh's tweet revealed a deliberate pivot towards the U.S. market, emphasizing his intent to create more significant opportunities for boxing legend Terence Crawford. Alal Sheikh further added, I decided to disregard the Canelo fight, as I don't want it anymore. Instead, I will be focusing on the U.S. market with bigger fights, especially for the legend Crawford. He further continued, and I know how he feels after losing to Bevel, so he's been looking for easier fights ever since. Also, I'm not the one who's afraid of fighting David Benavidez or Crawford. Therefore, I knew he was wasting our time and making excuses with big amounts of money that can't be paid. So I'm continuing my way to make big fights that serve the boxing world, and he's on his way to making easy show-only fights. Canelo Alvarez then responded to His Excellency critical post with a crying emoji, signaling his indifference about his views. Indeed, Alvarez doesn't seem bothered by Turkey's comments because he needs him and not vice versa. But after all this drama, Turkey has mentioned that a partnership between him and Canelo is possible in the near future. He said, he, Canelo, sent me a direct message that he wants to connect after the fight. When asked if he believes he can rekindle the relationship with Canelo after his fight with Edgar Berlanga, Turkey said, it is nothing personal, it is business. If Canelo is asking for similar money as the British heavyweights like Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury are getting for their recent fights, he's not going to be happy receiving less than that for the biggest fights available to him. Turkey said that he would like to see Canelo face Crawford or Benavidez next. I'd like to see it again, Crawford, and I'd like to see it against Benavidez. When asked if Canelo needs to be realistic by not asking for $200 million for a fight against Benavidez, Turkey said, of course no one pays this kind of money. Working with Canelo is possible for Turkey, but it's questionable whether he'll have luck putting together fights against Crawford or Benavidez. Canelo is already wealthy and makes good money fighting less popular fighters. Canelo isn't worried about fighting an aging, undersized fighter like Crawford. Still, fighting a defensive guy coming off a poor performance against Israel Madrimov would not do much for him. It's a fight that helps Crawford more than Canelo, so the Mexican star would want to be paid well to make it worthwhile. Nothing is impossible. Let's see in the future what happens. But if someone can do it, it's Riyadh season, said Turkey on his belief that he'll be able to work with Canelo. Moreover, Canelo versus Edgar Berlanga is taking place on the same date as UFC Nochi event at the Sphere, and Sean O'Malley, who is main eventing the UFC card, believes that UFC 306 will be more talked about than Canelo's upcoming fight. He said, when it comes to Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, who are they talking about? Are they talking about Canelo? Are they talking about the boxing fight? Or are they talking about the absolute dominating, beautiful, masterful, masterclass performance that I put on Marab and the viral knockout that came with it? Or are they talking about a 36-minute Canelo boxing fight that was kind of fire? That's what excites me. It's the competition of who are they talking about Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Who who stole the headlines? Me! Conor McGregor also took to X.com to share his thoughts on Canelo's selling power and about going head-to-head -head with the UFC on the same night as UFC 306, which takes place at the $2.3 billion The Sphere Show. McGregor posted, Canelo is a cornflake. He has about 300k pay-per-view buys in him. He does not generate nothing near what he seeks to be paid. UFC Noche is going to run them from the strip. Shake Turkey was right moving on. Canelo doesn't sell. Coming to what other pros have to say about Canelo versus Berlanga, Britain Good expressed doubts about Berlanga's skills, speculating that Canelo picked Berlanga because he wants to avoid taking on more difficult opponents as his career comes to an end. Good claims that Canelo would have had a far harder time competing against someone like David Benavidez, but the Mexican superstar is currently more concerned with maintaining his reputation than facing significant challenges. You can never stop them. You know, I don't, I don't even think Edgar Belinga is, is all that good, you know. I just think that he only got the Canelo fight because Canelo's on his way out, and he don't want to take, like, the, like, the really challenging fights, you know what I mean? Like, this is the type of fight that Canelo wants, you know? Like, somebody like David Benavidez or something, it would have been a hard fight for Canelo, and he's, he's slowly, slowly declining, in my opinion. So, he don't want to risk that. That that Teddy Atlas also shared his thoughts on Edgar Berlanga's upcoming fight with Canelo Alvarez. While praising Berlanga's development, Teddy also made it clear that he might not yet have the experience needed to take on a fighter of Canelo's ability. Even though Berlanga has made progress, Atlas thinks he would have benefited from a few more tough battles before taking on a fighter with Canelo's level of experience. Atlas stated, I believe that Berlanga is in the same sort of boat where he has improved, but he still needed a few more fights at that level to season him enough 
enough to handle a guy like Canelo. Atlas then mentioned a crucial element that might have an impact on the result, Canelo's age. He acknowledged that Canelo is getting older, which might be a vulnerability even if he is still a very strong boxer. No fighter is immune to the passage of time, Atlas noted, and it appears that Canelo is starting to sense its consequences. He continued, Canelo's a little older now, and that's the one thing he's battling against. There's a tiny bit of slippage if you're going to be honest, but he's still terrific. Nobody wins 100% of the time against Father Time. Sooner or later, Father Time gets you. Atlas concluded by speculating that Berlanga would benefit from this minor deterioration in Canelo's skills. Should Canelo have matured since his previous bout, Berlanga may be able to take advantage of it and perhaps pull off an upset. Canelo is in that, in that battle yet, but I know he's getting there. And maybe, maybe that he's gotten a little older since the McGeer fight. That could play for Belenga where he gets off. Because there will be a day if he stays around long enough where you say, oh, wow. On the other hand, Bernard Hopkins believes that Berlanga's statements have set Canelo on fire and will ultimately burn him down. He implied in a recent media appearance that Berlanga's remarks might have unintentionally inflamed Canelo, turning what could have been a less complicated battle into one that could have been disastrous for Berlanga. Hopkins made the point that remaining silent can occasionally result in a less violent battle, enabling a fighter to live and fight another day. Hopkins said, the worst thing he did to Canelo was energize him to destroy. You know, sometimes you just keep your mouth shut and the guy doesn't beat you up that bad and you live to fight another day. Berlanga blew that. Hopkins added that Canelo's perspective had been altered by Berlanga's provocation. For Canelo, what could have been just another bout had been personal. Hopkins thought that Canelo was now motivated by Berlanga's remarks to cause significant harm, going above and beyond simply winning the fight in order to make a statement and exact revenge on Berlanga. He added, Canelo took that off the table. I think he just wants to show him now. See, I was going to just go ahead and beat you up and get my $30 million, but now now I'm going to go ahead and make you piss blood. Bernard Hopkins foresaw the outcome of the bout that has generated a lot of anticipation in one way or another. He stated that he was confident Canelo Alvarez would defeat Edgar Berlanga in their next fight. He predicted that Canelo would not only win but also take out Berlanga in five to seven rounds, emphasizing that when the bell rings, Canelo is all business. Hopkins pointed out that Berlanga's own declaration that he was going for the knockout would be his undoing, since it would put him in direct confrontation with Canelo, who thrives in circumstances like this. Canelo serious, and that's why I say Canelo gets knock, knock, and knock him out within five, six rounds. He get, gets the knockout. Canelo gets the knockout. Canelo gets the knockout within six, seven rounds. Yeah. Belanga says going for the knockout as well. Huh? Belanga says he's going for the knockout as well. Sure, and that's why he will get knocked out. He must, he must come to the fire. I'm going with Canelo. I could be wrong, I doubt it. Anything can happen, right? But if you're asking me, Bernard, who are you going for if you had to put money down? The father and trainer of David Benavides, Jose Benavides Sr., drew attention to Canelo's inconsistent remarks, pointing out that although the boxer said David hadn't done enough to be worthy of a fight, he still went on to fight Edgar Berlanga, who may have accomplished less. Jose Sr. asserted that Canelo deliberately chooses opponents who he thinks would enhance his image rather than those who present a significant threat. He said, he was saying that David didn't bring anything to the table, that he hasn't done anything, but I guess Berlanga has done more than David for him to pick him. I think Canelo right now is just trying to get fighters that he thinks he's going to look good against. Without intending to be disrespectful to Berlanga, Jose Benavidez Sr. continued by acknowledging that anything may happen in the ring and that he thinks Canelo views him as an easier opponent. He pointed out that Berlanga appears to be a safer pick for Canelo because, in contrast to David, he hasn't demonstrated any discernible growth in his most recent fights. While praising Berlanga for holding on to the bout, Jose Sr. maintained his belief that Canelo and his group are counting on a straightforward victory, possibly even a finish. He then added, no disrespect to Berlanga, anything can happen. He might pull off a big upset, but based on his progress and fights, we've seen that he hasn't been developing that experience like Mungia. Canelo sees that, so he thinks it's an easy win for him. Everybody has a chance when they go up in the ring, but I think Canelo's team thinks they can look good and maybe even stop him. Terence Crawford sides with Canelo Alvarez for this fight despite the comments Canelo made about him. Terence said, I think Alvarez stops Berlanga. 
I think Berlanga is head over heels with this fight. I think Berlanga can be a great champion someday. I just think right now Canelo is just too much for him. In his analysis of the heated conference between Canelo and Berlanga, Robert Garcia said it was entertaining and helpful in building excitement for the impending fight. It's encouraging to note that, given the long-standing enmity between Puerto Ricans and Mexicans, Robert also mentioned that this may be the first time they have ever seen Canelo so agitated. It was funny. Yeah. It was funny. I like, I like, I, I, I didn't see that in Canelo. You know, fucking around, I eat, all that shit. But it was funny, it was fun, you know. People get, uh, people get, people, it, it caught people's attention because you don't, we don't expect that from Canelo, you know. He doesn't fuck around like that. Right. He's more of a serious person. But, you know, a little bit of that, it doesn't hurt. While predicting who will win this bout, Garcia highlighted the differences between the competitors, the most notable being the difference in experience, which gives Canelo an advantage in ultimately defeating Edgar via knockout. Robert emphasized that despite many fans criticizing Canelo for his disappointing performance in his previous fight with Mungia, he will make an incredible return this time around. Robert stated, I think Canelo should win by knockout as Canelo already said it so for this fight. In his most recent fights especially against Mungia, it seemed like he kind of held back a little and he didn't really pushed to get the knockout, which I think he could have, so I think this time he's taking a little more personally. Eddie Hearn, who previously promoted Canelo for multiple fights, is now guiding the career of Berlanga. The Puerto Rican puncher will be protecting an unbeaten record next month, and despite the step up in class, Hearn believes his man will give Canelo plenty of questions to answer. Eddie stated, Edgar respects him. He knows how great Canelo is, but he believes he's going to win, and he's an underdog. I'll tell you what, he'll have a right go, and it's a dangerous fight for Canelo Alvarez, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. Caleb Plant said that there's not much possibility that Edgar beats Canelo, but he also mentions that anything can happen in the sport of boxing. Plant also called out Edgar after he fights Canelo. You know, on that Canelo card, there's a guy that granted you're like, hey, if you don't get Canelo, I want you, you know, I want to fight you, Edgar. He got the Canelo fight. So is there a possibility that you think Edgar can beat Canelo? Or, or I mean, I don't see it, but you know, anything's possible in the sport of boxing. I'm sure we've seen crazier things, so, uh, but no, I don't, I don't see it. Would you fight Edgar after the fight, you know, uh, or it's just like... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can make it happen after, for sure. However, promoter Steven Espinoza believes Edgar Berlanga will be a tough opponent for Canelo Alvarez when they fight next month. He stated, Both fighters showed a bit of spark, some fire, some emotion, and you clearly got the sense that Berlanga is not a guy who is there just to show up, that he's motivated, that he's not intimidated, and all of that really helps because when you've got a guy as experienced and as accomplished as Canelo, one of your big challenges is convincing people that his fights will be competitive. So what are your thoughts about this fight? Do you think Canelo should have gone for someone other than Berlanga? Do let us know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of our other videos on the screen right now.